In this video, I'll walk you through how you can quickly build an app or admin panel on your Snowflake data. As a Snowflake user, you'll often need to quickly interface with data to generate reports, update other databases or APIs, augment data, or even build your own SaaS app. Retool makes it easy to build these types of apps by combining drag and drop UI components and easy to use data connectors. So let's take a look at how to quickly build an app with some Snowflake data. We'll start with this set of sample data in Snowflake, which is a set of 28 billion rows of sales data. And in about 10 minutes, we'll finish with this app to calculate the value of a marketing campaign by summing all of the sales transactions, which used a set of promo codes from that campaign. We'll also be able to create, read, and delete database entries, as well as instantly change the size of our Snowflake instance to speed up queries or save money. Okay. Let's get started. To start, create a new app in your retool interface, then open the right-hand panel, grab a table component, and drop it onto the canvas. You'll see that it's filled with dummy data, so let's create a query to get some data from Snowflake. I've already added mine, but you can add yours by going to Create a New Resource. Select Snowflake and plug in your credentials. You can also press Command-K to open up the Omni box which provides a way to quickly navigate to your resources. This is the one that I've set up, which is referencing our sample data table. With our query set up, we'll give it a name, calling it list promos, and then writing a select all from our promotion table. We'll set a limit to 20 for this demo so that we're only pulling in 20 values back from the table. And next, we'll select our table and change the input value writing in curly braces JavaScript to reference our list promos.data and see that it automatically populates the table with our values. Next, we'll add a text component and write some markdown to give our app a title. And let's give our table component a name and uh, make it expand to fill up the full width of the canvas. And then we'll add a text input so that we can search by specific promo codes in our table. We'll name our search input field and then modify the bottom panel query in order to reference this dynamic value from our search input using JavaScript to specify a null value when the field is empty. I then save and run the query and test it out by plugging in values into the search input field. Next, we'll add a tabbed container so that we can manage our campaigns, creating tabs for creating and viewing different campaigns. Then we'll add a table to our view campaign tab and now we need to get the data in from our campaigns. The table defaults to be populated with the data from the last query we created. So we'll clear that out and then create a new list campaigns query, selecting all campaigns from our campaigns table, again with a limit of 20 for demo purposes. We can then select our table component and reference our list campaigns query, and we can see all of the campaigns listed then in the table. Next, let's build out our create campaign functionality. To do this, we're going to add a form component, which will allow us to have inputs for each of the fields in our campaign table. We can either drag input components in or select generate from a resource. Retool will look at each of the columns in your table, showing you the column type and making a guess at which input type you want. We can then specify specific input types to match each of those columns. I click generate form and see all of the input fields showing up in my create campaign container. So I name one of the components and then add an array of values for potential owner options for my dropdown. You can also dynamically reference this from a JavaScript variable or from another query. Then clean up some of the labels. And for our campaign promo IDs, we want to be able to select multiple rows in our promos table and have those values show up in our create campaign input form field. First, let's clean up our promos table, hiding a bunch of unnecessary columns. And then we'll enable multi-row selection for our table so that the user can select multiple rows. And then we need to reference these selected rows in our campaign promo IDs input. To do this, we'll select our promo IDs input and enable custom values. And then we'll write some JavaScript to parse out only the promo IDs from the selected rows in our table and reference that in the default value field. 
Hovering over the JavaScript code, we can see that we have an array of all of the promo IDs, and the promo ID field now reflects all of the individual IDs from those selected rows. So I plug in some values to create a sample campaign, but before I can do that, I need to modify the query in the bottom panel. I'll select the query that was generated for us from the form generator, and then modify the key value pairs so that we're passing in all of the values from the form fields directly. And for the promo IDs value array, we'll just convert this value into a string. And lastly, we wanna create a success event handler so that when a new campaign is created, it will trigger our list campaigns query and update our list campaigns table. And finally, we can test it by clicking create campaign, which will run our new query and update our view campaigns table. And we can see our newly created value here. So now that we can create campaigns and view them, we wanna give our users the ability to delete these different campaign options. So to do this, we can select the table and scroll down to the Actions section, adding an Action button to the table. We'll give this Action button the text Delete, and then we'll go ahead and duplicate our prior query and change it to a Delete Action Type, and specify to delete the row based on the ID of the selected row in the table. And we'll confirm we're still calling the List Campaigns query on a successful deletion. Next, we'll link our Action button to our Delete Campaign query and test it out. Great, it works. Now we're able to view campaigns, create new campaigns, and delete existing ones. So our next step is to give the user the ability to select a campaign and see how much revenue there was associated with that campaign. So we create a new query and have it sum all of the net paid values over all of the 28 billion rows of sales transactions where the sales transaction includes one of our promo IDs. And now that we have this value, we can create a container to display it for the user. So we'll add a container, set some title values, fill in another text component, and add another container so that we can format our final number. And we'll use the Numbro JavaScript library to format the value as a currency. And so that we're not running this very heavy query every time someone selects a row, let's give the user a button so that when that button is pressed, it will run the campaign performance query specifically for the row they have selected and we'll specify for the query to only run when manually triggered by this button. And we'll link our button to an event handler which will call our new Git campaign revenue query. And we can test it and see that it's working. And finally, we'll add the last feature to our app. We wanna give our users the ability to quickly change the speed or the sizing of their warehouse so that if they're running some of these huge queries, they can speed it up, or if they wanna conserve on costs, they can slow it down. To do this, we're just simply adding a module that is pre-built in the account by another team member. This module simply consists of two buttons which run a query on Snowflake to alter the warehouse either to be larger or smaller. And with that, we're almost finished. I also added some styling to each of the components, including changing the header colors, adding some rounded corners, changing the background, and a couple other things. And you may have noticed the promo code performance box had a static number value for the number of total transactions in our database. So let's go back and make that dynamic. So we'll just take out the static value and then let's create a SQL query, which will allow us to get the count of the total number of transactions in the database. And we'll use Numbro again to format the data with a thousand separator. And that wraps up our app. So let's walk through the functionality we just built. We can go into the preview mode and see all of the functionality working. Being able to select different promo codes, create a campaign, add those promo IDs to that campaign, and then select specific campaigns and get their performance values. We can also change the warehouse speed directly in the interface. And now that we've completed the app, we can share it internally with teammates or as a public shareable link. Thanks so much for watching.